years, I decided that I was going to finally watch all three of the Ginger Snap movies and do a comprehensive review of all three films. Um, there will be spoilers overall for the entire series when I talk about each movie. Obviously, it's going to have spoilers for the, for the previous one, but I will do my best for the for each actual segment to not spoil the ending climax of everything, except for the second one. The second one is the only one that will be spoiled for the ending, but I'll put a very clear spoiler label so no one will have to worry about being spoiled if they don't. The first Ginger Snap movie um, came out in 2000. It's about the story of the two Fitzgerald sisters, um, Ginger and Bridget. Ginger is the eldest, Bridget is the younger sister, who are living in Bailey, Canada, and are obsessed with the macabre and death um, as a way of kind of um, setting themselves apart from the kind of suburban lifestyle that's been kind of put upon them. Um, this, everything comes to a change one night when they attempt to prank the kind of alpha bitch um, character Tina Sinclair um, by stealing her dog and making them be making her believe that it had been eaten by the Beast of Bailey. The Beast of Bailey is this um, figure that's been killing the local dogs in the area. So when they are on the way to get this attack, um, Ginger gets her period, and the period attracts the attention of the werewolf, the Beast of Bailey. And despite escaping and the werewolf being killed, Ginger is infected and starts to transform into a monster, a werewolf. What I love about this film is the different ways it kind of explores angst, puberty, and the supernatural um, altogether. I think that Ginger's transformation as it comes with her first period, she tells her sister something I think is very poignant about the whole movie. like. She said basically like, you try to be different and your own body betrays you. You see that Bridget and Ginger sort of fetishize ideas like suicide and death, but it's because to them it's not really real. You get the sense that it's mostly as a way to make them stand out because they are so trying to be anti-establishment and be against suburbia. And a lot of this thing is them learning the realities of death. Um, for them, this is just a way to stand out, but as Ginger begins to transform into a werewolf, um, the realities of death really become clearer, especially to Bridget, who is seeing her sister go through this transformation, feeling helpless about what she can do. And you see her become more and more determined to live and break out from Bridget's shadow. Um, angst is something that um, usually is looked at at scorn, especially in these kind of movies. I admit myself, I can get really tired of watching or reading characters go through angsty periods a lot of the time. But for some reason in this film, I connected a lot with the angst because mainly I think it's because it's, it's female oriented about things that I can identify with. The idea of, you know, wanting to stand out and feeling like if you don't, you're going to get lost in the mix and that you have to try and be different because you don't want to just end up being like your mother, being like everyone else around you, and having to deal with sexuality and changing and not knowing what you feel and being ashamed about what you feel. And also being under the shadow of a more of a much more um exciting, vibrant sibling. You know, I'm a middle child. I got that, you know, that Marsha Marsha Marsha. That's how I feel sometimes and you know, with Bridget it all feels very genuine. The best part about it, though, is the relationship between Ginger and Bridget. They are the biggest draw of the story because it's about their sisterhood and it being threatened by this new emergence, about all the changes going on in their life. And it, not just about the werewolf thing, because that's an, the main thing, but the subtext of puberty, about as you get older, how you become distant, how you do eventually conform to what people might want you to be and how that can ruin your relationship with people that you really value. And I think that one of the great things is Bridget's character development, about her coming out from Ginger's Stater coming out from Ginger's shadow, um, realizing her own self-worth, really being determined to, to live and go out and speak with other people, break apart from that group, and I think that her determination to live and her and fight and try to save her sister when Ginger doesn't even want to save herself is just really powerful. And you know that the end game for them, no matter what happens, is for them to be together. And you see, you know, Bridget trying to figure out a way to cure the lycanthropy from finding, like, herbs like monks and things like that. Everything she's trying to do is to, to further to have her and her sister be together forever. And I think that's a really beautiful thing. It's a movie really about these two trying to be close. Um, but I think in terms of supernatural, 
the ginger wolf is my second favorite werewolf aesthetically after the van helsing van um werewolves which are absolutely my favorite um you know the transformation i think is really the best part because ginger starts to like grow these these fangs she grows a tail like an actual tail and i remember first seeing that scene i was kind of like holy shit and he, she has this scene where she has to like basically strap it down when she's going to gym class and her hair starts to transform her skin gets rougher her sexual appetite and not just sex but about wanting to devour flesh happens i mean she ends up eating a dog later on it's all very gritty and i think that the, the thing is that she's turning into a true monster and i think it's so refreshing because usually with like anthropy and film right now it's all very wishy-washy you can transform whenever you want it's every time it's a full moon it's very last it doesn't really seem like a punishment but with ginger you get this idea that like no when she transforms this is gonna be a complete disaster because it's so violent so aggressive and she can't control it and i think that in the end it has this very tragic but beautiful message about these kind of things and i think that the sequel to ginger snaps makes the original ending so much sadder and so much darker even though the movie itself is kind of flawed the, the second film so overall i think the first ginger snap movie is the strongest because all the metaphors all the subtext all the uh, character relationships are really strong here how the development happens between Bridget and her mother and between J Bridget and the character of Sam and how all the high school drama kind of interlocks into this idea of lycanthropy so I think the first movie is definitely the best and the one I would highly recommend the second movie is Ginger Schnapps 2 Unleashed which came out in 2004 Bridget is now turning into a werewolf um, in the first movie she ends up getting infected herself, infecting herself with lycanthropy and despite the injections that she and Sam created to help save Ginger in the previous movie, we find out that they don't actually stop transformation, they only delay it. And she's also on the run because another werewolf who we don't really know the identity of is chasing her so she's traveling around and she ends up getting in an accident because of the werewolf he kills somebody else and bridget is found with the drugs the monk's hood in on her person and she gets checked into a mental institution a drug rehab basically and her drugs are taken away from her and she is slowly having this transformation kind of like all come together at once at the same time we have this young girl character by the name of Ghost, who's played by Tatiana Maisley, who people know now from Orphan Black, um, who's amazing, who is trying to bond with Bridget, and we're not really kind of sure to what means that bonding is happening, all the while trying to, like, Bridget trying to escape and get her dress and kind of put her life back together somewhat. I have a few problems with this movie, mostly because of how it opens up a lot of plot holes and, like, the setting that it chooses. Like, firstly, the transformation sequence in this movie and the third movie is completely different from the first one. Um, Bridget doesn't have the fangs really at the beginning she the way that Bridget transforms does not have the way that Ginger transforms and I feel like it's annoying because it's, it's a lack of consistency and I feel like especially because of the delayment of Bridget having taken the drugs it should have happened even quicker I feel like her her the thing that they choose for her to do are less intense because of the setting but I feel like because of the more um, closed setting, they should have made it like even more intense. Because she didn't, she grows like pointy ears, but she cuts it off. She doesn't grow a tail. Her hair doesn't really change the same way. It's very lax. I didn't really like that. I love the intensity of the transformation in the first movie. It's one of my favorite parts. The relationship between Bridget and Ginger is also gone because Ginger died in the first movie. And even though they had the actress come and do kind of like these cameo scenes, it's not the same. The dynamic between these two sisters is so important. And they attempt to kind of bring it back in with Ghost's character. And I think that the issue is that Bridget doesn't really give a shit about Ghost for the most part of the movie. So we don't really give a shit about Ghost. She's kind of an annoying kind of thing that kind of pesters her around and you don't really start to care about her until later on where she really becomes an interesting character so the two big things that i loved about the movie the intense werewolf um mythology and the relationship between the two sisters are both gone then the whole asylum thing is just annoying because they're always doing the same tropes it's never anything new you're just putting them into this environment so you can have the same kind of like sexy crazy girls like they seen where they're all talking about stuff and they're all masturbating it's all very awkwardly kind of done there were some positives i think the setting was really well done and that even though the annoying asylum thing was there 
Bridget being locked in created an atmosphere of real tension. Even though the transformation wasn't as intense, I feel like they did at least try to make Bridget's effect happen. And I think what really happens is the way that Bridget looks. I mean, she's very gaunt, very thin. I mean, you feel like she has been... She looks like a drug addict. You really do see her character arc, how much she has grown since the first movie, how she talks to people. She's so much more dynamic, so much more outgoing. You know, it's a really interesting thing to see that development with her character. Um, I also think that Ghost eventually does become interesting. I think Ghost's story is interesting mainly because of how it's kind of like a almost a little Red Riding Hood story, especially how she kind of connects with um, Bridget's character. And I think that um, as you go deeper into Ghost story, it gets more interesting, but it happens so far in that you kind of are kind of tired out by that point. I know there was a point where like when she finally got where you could learn more about Ghost, I was kind of like, oh, the movie's still going. It seems to go a little bit longer than it needs to be. Um, but again, I felt like Bridget was a really compelling protagonist in this story, and that was really the strong point. Now, the ending, I think, is the most powerful point of this film, and there's a spoiler for this because I will be spoiling the ending. So basically, you have the werewolf big bad that we don't know comes in, um, he fights with Bridget, Bridget ends up winning. But what's so sad that you find out the twist is that Ghost is really evil and she wants to trap um, Bridget and make Bridget basically her servant. What this movie kind of solidifies for us as the audience is this knowledge of that lycanthropy in this world is incurable. And it brings the idea that no matter what Bridget did, no matter what Bridget tried to do to save Ginger in the first movie, it would not have worked because Ginger was always going to either become a werewolf or have to die. And now Bridget is going to have to suffer the same fate. But then we move on to the third movie and the weakest of the trilogy, Ginger Snaps Back the Beginning, which came out in also in 2004. My biggest problem with this movie is that it's basically a softer rehashing of the first movie in a period piece. It takes place in um in 19th century Canada with the Fitzgerald sisters. They're traveling together alone. You have no idea really why. And they find themselves heading towards Fort Bal um Fort Bailey, which is under siege because of these werewolf attacks that have been happening in the area. Um, according to mythology, there were fur traders who go out and the, none of them would come back, but all these werewolves keep attacking because they're kind of returning to the same place. It's implied that, you know, the traders got turned into werewolves somehow. And the ideas of the Wendigo are brought up because they bring kind of like um, First Nation mythology into the story. Um, so the girls end up taking refuge in the fort and Ginger goes out one night and she ends up getting bitten by the one of the werewolves that's in the area and she starts to transform into a wolf and all the men are kind of paranoid about things due to the attacks and this makes the girls in danger but the thing about this is that it's a huge rehash without all the drama with the, the complexities of the of the story of the complexities of the teenage drama of the relationship between the sisters it's just it's not as strong the only thing that really this movie does to touch on race dynamics because of the um, First Nation um, characters and mythology and then gender issues because Bridget and um, Ginger are the only two females in the fort and so this preacher guy keeps calling them sluts and stuff and they've got the villainous character who's played by Chris Argent from people know from Teen Wolf being the douchebag in here. But other than that, like there's nothing really being put here. It's just more of the same story all over again. And then Bridget and Ginger's relationship becomes so much more codependent than before. A lot of the first, first movie was about Bridget growing up and dealing with being someone outside of her sister. But in this movie, it's like they are no one outside of each other. And it ruins their bond because they stop being regular people. I mean, Bridget is so driven to survive in the first movie. and in, in this movie, she doesn't seem to actually be thinking in the bigger picture, the bigger spectrum than she did in the first one. She's just completely like, sisters, that's it. Nothing, just sister, sister, sister. And it's like, I love that Ginger and Bridget love each other as sisters. They love each other and they have that bond. But Bridget was so determined to live still, and that's just completely taken away, and she's so passive about Ginger's transformation. Ginger isn't going through the same kind of mood swings and anything like that she did before. It's completely softened in the first movie, and I think that alone made me not really enjoy it as much because I wasn't get even if I was going to have to do a rehash of this, it was a poorly done, basically a remake of the first movie with less drama. And then... There, and then the, I, there's no arc, no character growth. It was the weakest of the films, and I just felt like it was a, it was, it was a waste of time in the degree that like it was still 
good, but it was nowhere near as good as or as necessary as the other two movies. I don't know why I had to do this prequel. It's supposed to explain how things happen, but all it was make it feel cheap and make it feel like everything that Bridget and Ginger went through was just destiny, and I hate that. Um, even though this has the happiest ending, it's still, to me, the weakest of the films. Overall, I would give the entire trilogy between a 7.5 and an 8. I think the third movie, while it's the weakest, doesn't ruin the trilogy for me. I just feel like it feels more like a cash cow than anything else, and that disappoints me because this series was so good and had so much to say, and the third movie really didn't have anything to say at all.